Okay, this next topic has got um, hydrolysis in it, but it's actually all about how we pick an indicator. That's what the implications of this is. So you need to know for um, when you have a neutralization reaction, if the salt you end up with, because remember if in a neutralization as reaction you've got an acid and base giving you a salt and water, when you run this neutralization reaction, you have to know is the salt acidic or is the salt basic? And this is based on your acid and your base and this whole dissociation thing going on. And also if I just gave you a salt and asked you to, to dissolve it in water, what would you expect to find? Would you expect to find an acidic salt or a basic salt? So this is based on hydrolysis, hydrolysis of salts, okay? So the reaction between water and the ions in a salt solution is known as hydrolysis. And this is what leads to the origin of an acidic or a basic solution. So in, other than you would think that if you just got a salt and you dissolved it in water, it would be like neutral. But that actually doesn't happen because of these equilibrium re uh, reactions with the acids and their conjugate bases. So when we look at these, there are some ions that are spectator ions because they really don't um, have equilibrium reactions. So like sulfate, this chlorate, I'm not 100% sure that's chlorate, iodine, chlorine, nitrate, and cations like potassium and magnesium. These don't take part in equilibrium reactions. They just sit there in the solution and they watch, so they are spectators. They don't cause equilibrium shifts. If you look at the other ions in solution, okay, the iron in water might turn back into a covalent molecule or some other kind of iron plus a proton. So if the iron with some water gives you an iron or a molecule and a proton, it's acidic. And if the iron and water gives you a hydroxide iron with it, it ends up being basic. So this would be an acidic salt, this would be a basic salt. So we need to actually look at some examples, okay? But this is what it boils down to. This is how it's summarized, and this is probably the most important thing to look at here and to try and remember, okay? If you have a strong acid and a strong base, like for instance, hydrochloric acid and um, sodium hydroxide, look here, example, they will give you hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide an acid in the base gives you a salt and water. They're going to give you sodium chloride and water. It's a strong acid, a strong base. The pH will be 7. If you have a weak acid and a weak base, the pH is also going to be 7. But this reaction, it doesn't really want to happen. Okay, A weak acid and a weak base, it's like not really interested in anything. So if you mixed vinegar and ammonia, it would give you ammonium ethanoate. See, he has the ammonium iron. He has the ethanoate iron or Americans might call this ammonium acetate. So this is also pH 7, but it's like when you make a titration of these two, you never ever get a lacquer end point. It's, it's really, you can't tell. So this is probably just going to be ignored or asked you what happens with this, and you have to say, uh, not much. So then if you get a strong acid and a weak base, so if you mix hydrochloric acid and ammonia, you end up with ammonium chloride. But this is a strong acid and a weak base. You end up with an acidic salt, okay? And remember, acidic is pH less than 7. If you mix a weak acid like vinegar, <coughs> excuse me, and a strong base like sodium hydroxide, you're going to end up with a basic salt. The pH will be high. The sodium ethanoate is, is basic because it came from a strong base, okay? So then they might ask you this in terms of what is going on with the equilibrium reaction. So if you look at ammonium chloride, this in water is going to split up into the ammonium ion and the chlorine ion, okay? And the ammonium ion in water will give you ammonia and a proton, and the chlorine ion in water will give you hydrochloric acid and a hydroxide ion. But if you have a look here, ammonia is a weak base, okay? So the equilibrium is going to lie to the right and it would have more protons whereas hydrochloric acid is a strong acid the equilibrium is going to lie to the left these chlorine ions want to stay in solution okay they don't want to go back and form this they're actually quite happy being this chlorine ion and not this covalent thing so 
you end up with a low concentration of hydroxide ions. So if you've got more protons and less hydroxide ions, then you've got a high concentration of protons, a low concentration of hydroxide ions, and the salt ends up being acidic. Okay, so I always just find this easiest to think of. How did I make this salt? And you look and I must have had ammonia and hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid so I've got an acidic salt. That's how I'd rather think about it but you have to look at this dissociation thing. Where does the equilibrium want to lie? So here's another example. Here's sodium carbonate. So if you made this, think about this, you would have to make this from for instance sodium hydroxide and that carbonic acid. Remember that H2CO3? Okay so from me looking at this, I would go, okay, how would I make this? Then I'm going to end up with a basic salt because this came from sodium hydroxide. Okay, so have a look here what happens looking at these dissociation reactions. If you've got sodium carbonate, it's going to split up in water into two sodium ions and a carbonate ion. But a sodium ion in water wants to go to sodium hydroxide and a proton, and a carbonate ion in water goes to carbonic acid and hydroxide ions okay did I call this a hydroxide ion I hope I didn't sodium and water goes to sodium hydroxide and a proton yes and the carbonate plus water goes to carbonic acid and hydroxide ions so sodium hydroxide is a strong base so it likes to be this iron it doesn't want to form these protons so this because sodium hydroxide is a strong base but carbonic acid is a weak acid you're not actually going to get um, many hydroxide ions out of that. And the moment you've got a lot of, uh, not a lot, a few protons and a lot of hydroxide ions, you end up with an alkali, pH greater than 7. So sodium carbonate is an alkali. So, like I said, I prefer to look at what it came from, but this is the reasoning behind it. If you look at the individual reactions of the individual ions in solution, you will find that this one wants to stay as a sodium ion, okay? And this one would rather do this. It would rather be um, the uh, carbonic acid. So remember this now. This is the takeaway part of this. What happens when you do hydrolysis of an iron? A strong acid and a strong base is going to give you a neutral salt. A weak acid and a weak base is going to give you a neutral salt, but it's a it's a reaction that um, there's reaction curves for this. This reaction does not reach end point properly. If you have a strong acid and a weak base, you're going to end up with an acidic salt. If you've got a weak acid and a strong base, you're going to end up with a basic salt. And so this is the takeaway lesson from hydrolysis of salts.